Okay, this is section 4-2, part 2. Section 4-1 dealt with the and situation, probability of something happening first and something happening second and third and so forth. You're multiplying, and what you had to be worried about is whether those events were dependent or independent. You had to adjust the probability of the second and third to account for the fact that the first thing happened. Well, this is now the or thing. First thing would... The ors, we're not using the multiplication rule, we're using the addition rule, all right? And what you have to be concerned about is double counting um, things that fall into both sets. You don't want to double count, you just want to count each item one time, one time only, all right? If the um, events are mutually exclusive, they can't happen at the boat at the same time, and then you're not subtracting anything, and we'll get through this. All right, so the first four questions are asking us whether events are mutually exclusive. If they're mutually exclusive, there's no overlap. Here's a Venn diagram illustrating that. And if they're not mutually exclusive, there items are, there's some overlap. Items could be in both sets here. Um, in a single trial, that's the whole thing with these AND situations. Um, in a single trial, could I get a ball that's red and at the same time that same ball be blue? No. It's either going to be red or it's going to be blue. Please don't say, well, maybe it's half red, half. No, you, you got to think, but you can't overthink it. The ball is either red or it's blue. It's not going to be both colors. Yes, these are mutually exclusive. There's no overlap. A ball can't be red and blue at the same time. Uh, meeting a man is wearing an umbrella. Meeting a man that's wearing a raincoat. Well, chances are if he has an umbrella, it's going to rain or it's raining or it's going to rain. If he has an umbrella, chances are he also has a raincoat on. All right, so no, these are not mutually exclusive. There is some overlap. He could have an umbrella and a raincoat at the same time, very likely. Read a book about Mark Twain. Read a book about Tom Sawyer. No, he's not mutually exclusive because Mark Twain wrote a book, The Adventures of Tom Sawyer. So there's a definite overlap between the books that Mark Twain wrote and books about Tom Sawyer. Go to a formal dinner affair with you. And you go there, a person goes there wearing blue jeans. He asks, this, these, uh, these are two events are mutually exclusive. There's not going to be an overlap. A person at a formal affair and this person's wearing blue jeans. Chances are, if you're going to a formal affair, you get a suit on if you're a man. Um, or a tuxedo, you're not wearing blue jeans. Yes, mutually exclusive. No overlap going on here. Uh, probably of something happening, probably of A is one-seventh. What's the probability of this complement? Well, we know the probability A plus the probability of the complement has to equal one. A sure thing. So, to find a complement, you take one, you subtract the probability of the event happening, and you have the probability of the complement. If probability of A is one-seventh, then the probability of the complement is one whole, subtract one-seventh, leaving you six-sevenths. Based on meteorological records, probability it snows in a certain town in January is 0.185. What's the probability it will not snow on January 1st? Well, 1 minus 0.185 gives you a decimal of 0.815. Pretty straightforward. Number seven, common error here is we're talking about um, probably of someone's birthday not being in May. Your first assumption is, well, there's 12 months in the year, May is one of them, so 1 minus 1 12 leaves you 11 twelfths. The faulty logic there is the days in the months of the year are not equally likely. Some days have 30, some months have 31, some months have 30, and then February has 28. So what you've got to do is figure out how many days in the year are uh, in the month of May. Well, it's 31 days out of the 365 that are uh, days in May. 1 minus 31 over 365 leaves 334 out of 365 days that are not in the month of May. You can't use 12s because of the fact that days of the month are not equally likely. Number 8, some of these problems you can actually figure out in your head. And a lot of times you actually got to spell it all out. This is what I've done here. You've got to spin up. It's got the numbers 1 through 21. Um on the spinner. He's asking me, what's the probability that the spinner, when I spin it, lands on an even number or a multiple of three? So what I've done here is I figured the probability of even numbers, add the probability of multiples of three, and subtract the double count, numbers that are even and multiples of three at the same time. 
I don't want to double count any number. How many numbers are even? Well, there's 10 of them. The 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, and 20. There's 10 days out of 21. There are even numbers. 10, not days, but 10 numbers. Uh, numbers that are multiples of 3. The 3, the 6, the 9, the 12, the 15, the 18, and the 21. There are 7 of them. Now, how many numbers are both even and multiples of 3? Well, the 6 is even and a multiple of 3. The 12 is an even and a multiple of 3. And the 18 is an even number and a multiple of 3. I don't want to double count them. I've already counted them once when I counted the even numbers. I don't want to count them again as multiples of 3. So it's 10 over 21 plus 7 over 21 uh, multiples of 3. Subtract the double count. All right, which gives me 14 over the total of 21 days to lowest terms. Two-thirds, letter B. Many of these problems we do with these um, or problems where we're adding is to, we have charts. Here we have non-smokers, occasional, regular, heavy, men, women, and totals. So he says, hey, if one out of the 1,127 people is randomly selected, what's the probability it's a man or a heavy smoker. Well, the probability of being a man is favorable, 583, out of a total of 1127. There you see it there. Uh, probability that you get a um, heavy smoker. Let's see, heavy smokers there are 69, favorable out of a total, once again, of 1127. Now, what you want to do is to subtract the double count. These 34 people, I counted them once as being men, all right, and I counted them again as being heavy smokers. Can't do that. So it's the probability of being a man plus the probability of being a heavy smoker minus the men who are also have heavy smokers. When you're doing this, you're putting um, little circles, all right, around the men. You're putting them on the heavy smokers. One's going to be a horizontal. One's going to be a vertical. And the double count will be obvious because there'll be two circles around it. I've already counted these 34 people once as men. I don't want to count them again as heavy smokers. All right. So, um, doing this, you get an answer of 0. 0.548 letter B. Probably of being a man plus the probability of being a heavy smoker minus the probability of a man and a heavy smoker at the same time. Number 10, I say go to the bottom because I ran out of space here. Number 10, this is unusual because you weren't provided with a chart. All right. Um, it's very unlikely because of time constraints that I'll give you one similar to this where you have to do your own chart. But just to go through it, as I read the problem, I found there were males. If there's males, there's also females. And then I had people that answered yes to a question. Well, if I had yes, then I had people that answered no. So I put male and female in the uh, this vertical column. I put yes or no across the top, and I labeled a, a column totals. Out of 84 people who answered yes, well, there's a total, 84 people answering yes. He says 70, uh, 70 of these uh, 14 were males out of the 84 we answered yes 14 were males all right so that's in black well if the total of 84 14 were males the remaining 70 must have been females and then he tells me out of 73 people who answered no there's my no column there's a 73 people 12 were males well if i take 73 so i subtract 12 then 61 must have been women very important is i added the columns i added these going horizontally 26 males, 70 plus 61, 131 uh, females. And then most important is the total here. But this wasn't given to me. I had to construct my own table. Now comes time to answer the question. What's the probability of getting a person who answered yes or was a male? Well, how many people answered yes? Well, 84 favorable over total, 84 over 157. Plus the probability of being a male. Total favorable is 26 out of a total of 157. Subtract people who answered yes and were male at the same time. These 14 people here, they were males and they also answered yes. So I want to subtract the, the, the double count. That's where I'm getting my 96 over 157. And as a decimal point, um, 611 
which was letter D. Going back to number 11 up top here. Well, same thing. He's at the bottom here. Way at the bottom here again. There was no chart provided. I came up with my own chart. And if you read through this, you've got three different age brackets, 18 to 22. And then you've got 22 through 30. And then finally, you've got 31 through 40. So I put that across this horizontal uh, row. And then I had smokers, and then I had non-smokers. So he tells me 183 people were in this age group, 59 were smokers. Well, 59 were smokers. The remainder, the difference, 124 had to be non-smokers. And I played the same game. He told me 34 people were smokers in this age group out of 140. So 106 must have been non-smokers. And he tells me there's 22 people who smoked. Out of a total of 99, and then at the difference here, 77 must have been non-smokers. I needed it to figure these numbers out because I needed totals, all right? Um, he doesn't give me this information. He didn't give me anything in red I had to fill in myself. Uh, and once again, I doubt very much with the time constraints. I'll have you construct your own table, but it's not a big deal. It's just time-consuming. And what's the probability of getting someone in the 18 to 22 age group and or does not smoke? Well, probability of the 18 to 22 group is there's a total of 183 people that were in this age group out of a total of favorable over total. Non-smokers, there are 307 out of 422 who were non-smokers. Now, I want to subtract the double count. Double count would mean people in this age group who were non-smokers. I've already counted these 124 people when I figured this sum out here. I don't want to count those same 124 again as being non-smokers. You can tell I got two little circles around. This means I've, I've double counted them. So I'll subtract and come up with 366 over 422, which gave me my answer of 0.867 spot on. All right, number 11, so let me go back up here. This is interesting because he um, gives me this information here, and he gives me this circle diagram. And to be quite honest, the circle diagram has nothing to do with solving the problem, to be quite honest. My question why they even gave us. we got 100 people, and we want to find a probability of someone who carpools or works full-time. So... How many people carpool? Well, it looks like you got six people here and these nine people, six were full-timers and nine were part-timers, but they all carpooled. So we had a total of 15 people out of 100 who carpooled. How many people work full-time? Well, these seven people and those four and those 30 and these six for a total of 47. But notice these six people, I'm counting them as being full-timers, but I already count them initially as being... Uh, People working full time, so I don't want to double count these six people, so I just subtract them from my total, giving me 56 over 100.56. You don't want to double count. You get a six sided die, you roll it and find a probability of a three or a five. Well, a die can end up being a three and a five at the same time, so there is no double count. Probability of rolling a three, one chance in six. Probability of rolling a five, one chance in six. There is no double count because these guys are mutually exclusive. You can't roll a die, get a three and a five at the same time. It's either a three or a five. You can't be both at the same time, so there's no double count. Mutually exclusive. Two chances out of six, lowest terms, that's uh, one-third. A card is drawn from a well-shuffled deck of 52 cards. Find a probability of drawing a face card or a four. First thing I realize is these guys are mutually exclusive. A card can't be a face card and a four at the same time. Face cards are jack, queens, and kings. How many face cards are there in a deck? 12 out of 52, favorable over total. How many cards are number uh, have the number four? Well, you have the four clubs, spades, diamonds, and hearts. There's four out of 52. Subtracting the double count. Well, the double count, there is no double count. The card can't, these guys are mutually, these events are mutually exclusive. You can't draw a face card and a four at the exact same time. It's either one or the other. Uh, that's why you're subtracting nothing. Uh, your bag contains five red marbles, three blue marbles, and one green. Find a probability of not blue, favorable over total. How many uh, marbles aren't blue? Well, these five here. 
and that one green one here. So five and one is six. Six out of nine probability is two thirds, not blue. You get six marbles that are not blue. Um, this is actually something that we did. I did a separate uh, worksheet for this, at least one. The whole idea with at least one is you come at it through the back door, so, so to speak. You work with the complement. Find a probability that among seven randomly selected graduates, at least one finds his job, his or her jo uh, job in their chosen field. All right. So it says that 55% of the graduates do find a job. Well, if 55% do find a job, then 45%, 0.45, don't find a job. So to solve this, I'm using a complement rule. One minus all seven people not finding a job in their chosen field. All right. And one minus that gives me 0 0.9996. At least one. We, we make use of the complement rule. Now, these guys here were um, independent. The fact that one person didn't find a job didn't affect the probability that the second person didn't find a job and they chose to feel independent events. Now, I make a point of that because number 17, it's the same thing. We're making use of a complement rule, but these guys, this, this um, problem here illustrates dependent events, so I have to adjust my probability. A sample of four different calculators is randomly selected from a group containing 16 that are defective and 30 that have no defects. Well, first thing I realize a total of 16 and 30, I got a total of 46 different calculators. Find a probability that um, at least one is defective. So it's one minus the probability that none of them are defective. Well, starting out, it's the chances of getting one that has no defects. It's 30 over 46. I put that one to the side. I go in, I draw another one out. Well, guess what? I only have 29 out of a total of 45 that um no defects third time i draw i've got less i've only got 28 out of a total of 44 times 27 over 43 so this is different than number 17 we're still making use of the complement rule but these events were dependent i had to adjust the probability of each subsequent draw to a, to account for what happened previously unlike in number 16 where these events were not mutual were not uh, dependent independent uh a blood testing procedure blood samples from six people are combined to one mixture the mixture will test negative if all the individual's samples are negative if the probability that an individual test is positive is 0 0.11 what's the probability that the mixture will test positive well it's one minus the probability that no one tests positive well, if the probability of testing positive is 0.11, the probability of not testing positive is 1 minus that 0.89. Now, these guys are like number, five, number 16. They're independent. The fact that one person tests positive does not affect the probability that the next person tests positive. So it's 1 minus the first person testing negative. I'm sorry, testing uh, negative times the next person times the next person. Well, I'm using the same probability, 0.89. If 1-1 one, one is the probability of testing positive and 0.89 is the probability that that person tests negative, all six persons test negative. 1 minus 0.89 to the 6th power is 0.503. All right, 10 we've already done, and we've already done number 11, and lo and behold... That's it. Now, why I'm getting 18 is, oh, and this is number 18. I, we already went through these already. It's getting late in the day. I'm getting tired. Okay, hopefully that helps. Um, yeah, but obviously, um, if you have any other questions, we can, you know, address them when we do our, our Zoom meeting on Friday. I can go over it and um, perhaps make it a little clearer if you still have an issue. I hope this helps.